Hi guys and welcome back to another Let's Build episode. So last time we were building up the Iron Bank of Lordsport and as part of that I asked you guys for some ideas on the lore of how the family got started and how the bank got started and as usual guys you did not disappoint and you gave me some amazing responses. I love reading through all of them and we'll get on to the one that actually won in just a little while. Now if you're new to the channel at all, we do a lot of tutorials and time lapses just like this one, so make sure to hit the subscribe button. Also guys, if you're new to the Lord's Port series or the Let's Build Pataria series, I'll leave a link in the card above as well as in the description so you guys can catch up. Anyway, let's get into building. So the first thing I need to do on this build is actually flatten out the area a bit and also make the hill a little bit more of a cliff so that we've got more building area. So while I'm doing that in the background, I want to talk to you guys about which idea won for the lore story. Again, there were amazing suggestions as always. I really do love reading through all of them. It's awesome. It's really good to see all of the different ideas that you guys have got. But the one that won was by Maverick Lucas, where the Tuman family, who were originally some of the greatest blacksmiths in Lordsport, lent money to the lower classes during a time of financial difficulty. Rather than borrowing, from the greedy bankers who were squeezing the peasants for everything they had. Eventually, their banking operation grew so much that they actually gave up blacksmithing, but incorporated their leftover iron into the first bank, earning it the name, the Iron Bank. Today, the Tumans are one of the wealthiest families in all of Lordsport and own the largest banking chain in the city. How amazing is that story guys? So much history woven into it with the people of Lordsport. I absolutely love it. Amazing piece of lore there by Maverick Lucas. Now just going back into the build, we can see that that nice cliff is now done. That hill is now completed. We've now got a road going down into what would be the slums and also a kind of area that is going to lead again to the Undercity. I keep on talking about the Undercity. We're going to have to get to some of that at some point. And you can just see me laying out some rough ideas of where I'm going to have some of the slum buildings. We're not going to get onto that this episode, but just to kind of get a feel for the size of the area itself. Now, coming onto the top of the hill, this is actually a build that I ditched, but I wanted to leave it in because I wanted to talk a little bit about why I ditched it and why I don't think it fit. But um, yeah, the idea would be that we've actually got some restaurants on the hill. I really wanted some restaurants around the arena so that you can go and grab some food. Uh, the problem that I had with this one is that it didn't look quite right perched right on this hill, right on the edge of it. Uh, but also it was very, very close to the arena itself and we didn't really have any open space. So you couldn't see the arena, I can imagine that happened. But there is a couple of good ideas from that that I will steal for some later houses. So if we now come on to this diagonal building, this is the one I actually ended up keeping and this is where it just looked too cramped and I wasn't too keen on it. But again, I wanted a nice diagonal building and this time what I decided to go with was the yellow colour for it. I wanted it to be bright because it's on this hill, it makes a lot of sense for it to be bright, inviting uh, and quite vibrant for some form of restaurant. And that is the question for this time guys. What is this restaurant? What's the name of the family? Is it a family run restaurant or is it more of a franchise now? What kind of food do they actually serve as well? Because we can make a chain of restaurants uh, going around Lordsport. I think that'd be quite a cool thing to do. But that is your question for this week, guys. And then I'll add the response or the one that won in next week's episode as always. So now you can just see me demolishing that building. It just looked too tight and didn't really fit with everything around the arena instead giving me a nice open area allows me to put some seating and also a couple stools as well because of course you're gonna have some fast food uh, just because hot dogs weren't invented back in the day well sausages were quite common so I was like I've got to put in a hot dog stand here a medieval hot dog stand get that in there get a lot of seating because you can imagine the arena as soon as it kicks out you're gonna be wanting either some drink or some food or a bit of both now finishing up this road going to the arena as well, so this is the last one actually going into it, which is quite cool I think. Um, but just smoothing that out a bit, making it a lot more natural. And also the building that we've got on the left there, the white building, I'd actually left because I wasn't too sure what I was going to do with that if I was going to have another building against it. But now we can finally finish it up. So, so many episodes ago when we're building that, we can now get that all completed. 
So here is the finished build guys. We've got the medieval hot dog or sausage stand and also the restaurant that I need your guys' help to kind of come up with the idea of what food do they sell? What is the family? Is it actually a family run restaurant that's been quite successful here on the hill outside the arena? I'm also really happy that we've actually been able to finish up this nice big milestone of the city project which is the hill around the arena. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this episode. If you have, make sure to comment, like and subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one.